Let's now work out some example problems related to DC motors. In the first problem, we're going to find out how much torque is produced by a spinning permanent magnet DC motor. Let's first note down our circuit model for the permanent magnet DC motor. We're told that this motor draws 0.8 amperes when it's connected to a 12 volt source, and this causes the motor to spin at 3600 RPMs. Let's go ahead and first convert RPMs to SI units. I can rewrite RPMs as rotations per minute. I know that there are two pi radians in one rotation, and I know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. I now have the rotational speed in SI units, 120 pi radians per second. Since I know both the current coming out of the source and the voltage at the source, I know what the electrical power input to the system is. It's 9.6 watts. Since the motor is only 80% efficient, I can just find the output power by multiplying 9.6 watts times 80%. 7.68 watts winds up as rotational power. We know that power is torque times speed. I can now find the torque. The torque produced in this example is 0.024 watts per radian per second, or equivalently 0.0204 newton meters. Let's now take a look at a slightly more complicated example. Here we're told that one amp is drawn from a 12 volt source, and we're also given the torque produced by the motor, and we're told that one watt is lost in the rotor coil. We need to find the speed, the rotor coil resistance, and the back EMF constant. The rotor coil resistance is probably the easiest to find. Power burned up in a resistor is just I squared R, and we know both the current and the power. The rotor coil resistance is just one ohm. In order to find the speed and the back EMF constant, we're going to have to know the back EMF. The back EMF is just the voltage developed across the motor itself, neglecting the winding loss. It's fairly straightforward to solve for the back EMF using the Kirchhoff voltage rule. Before I calculate the speed, I'd like to take a look at where the power goes in this particular motor. We start here at the input with 12 watts. That's the power that comes from the source. Of that 12 watts, we know that one is lost at the resistor. So we're left with 11 watts electrically delivered into the motor. However, we're told that 0.8 watts is lost due to friction. Therefore, we have only 10.2 watts actually winding up as mechanical rotation. I know that mechanical power is torque times speed. So I can calculate the speed by taking the mechanical power and dividing it by the torque. This comes out to 102 radians per second, and that works out to 974 RPMs. We found the speed, and the only thing left to find is the back EMF constant. We know that our back EMF is 11 volts. We've just calculated our speed, and we can finally determine that the back EMF constant is 107.8 millivolts per radian per second. In the third example, we're tasked with determining the speed, the torque, the mechanical output power, and the efficiency of a particular motor. I always like to draw the circuit model of a motor because it often helps to organize my thoughts. We're given the operating voltage, the current drawn, the rotor coil resistance, and the torque constant, which I've converted to standard SI units. We typically need to know the back EMF to calculate things in motors, so let's start by calculating that. I can again use the Kirchhoff voltage rule to find the back EMF. We have 12 volts at the source and a voltage drop across the coil resistance. We end up with effectively 7 volts across the motor itself. The torque constant is defined as the ratio of the back EMF to the speed, so I now have enough information to actually calculate the speed. It's important to keep everything in SI units. The speed comes out to be 140 radians per second, which works out to 1,337 RPM. Since the torque constant and the back EMF constant are equal, I have enough information to go ahead and calculate the torque since I already know the current. The mechanical output power is always related to the actual torque developed. Keeping everything in SI units, it's not difficult to find that the mechanical output power is 7 watts. We now just need to find the efficiency. The efficiency relates the output mechanical power to the input electrical power. In this case, it's 58.3%. In previous examples, we've looked at motors that were operating at a single speed driving a single load. 
In this example, we're going to look at a slightly more complicated situation. We're going to use measurements of a motor taken when it was spinning, driving one particular load, and use those measurements to predict how the motor will behave driving a different load. We're told that when the motor is spinning at 4,000 RPMs, it draws 0.67 amperes from a 12 volt source, but we don't know what the rotor coil resistance is. That's going to be a problem when we go to calculate the back EMF. I need to know what the voltage drop is across that rotor coil, and I'm going to have to have the resistance in order to get it. We can determine that, though, because we know the stall current. When the motor stalls, the speed of rotation is zero. It's what happens if, for example, you were to grab the motor shaft and put so much resistance on it that it's no longer able to turn. If a motor can't turn, it can't develop any back EMF. All of the voltage drop needs to appear across the coil. The resistance of the rotor coil is thus 6 ohms, and it's 6 ohms while the motor is spinning as well. I now have enough information to find the back EMF when the motor is spinning at 4000 RPMs. I can use the Kirchhoff voltage rule to find the back EMF. The back EMF constant is just the back EMF divided by the speed, and I know both of these numbers. After converting the speed into standard SI units, radians per second, I can find the back EMF constant. We've worked out the situation at a speed of 4000 RPMs. Let's now work out the situation at 2000 RPMs. Our source is still 12 volts, just like it was before, but we might have a different current being drawn. Our rotor coil resistance is 6 ohms, just like it was before. We don't know the current or the back EMF, but it's not difficult to find the back EMF given that we have the back EMF constant. We have some unit cancellation and the back EMF works out to 3.99 volts. I can now apply Ohm's law to find the current through this resistor. Current equals voltage divided by resistance, and I now know that the current is 1.33 amperes. The torque is the torque constant times the current, so it's relatively straightforward to calculate the torque as 0.025 newton meters.